Ah, oh, this is comfy. Hi. Ah, hello. All right. We have our little whiteboard. We have our whiteboard, and this is our season four recap conversation with everyone. Because every once in a while in a relationship, you just need to <laughs> sit down and have a chat, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and this is that. So let's talk about what we're going to cover in the second episode. We are going to talk about our top four destinations of season four. Yes. What else are we doing? Our top four lessons for newbies. Yes, our top four tips. Top four RV tips. RV newbies. Yes. Okay, and then we are also gonna share our top four questions that we've been getting about Alaska. Woo! So we have a so much to cover and we're gonna set some expectations as to what you can expect over the next two to three weeks as we prepare to go to Alaska because this is the last video of season four. Yes. And also some of the upgrades and the modifications we've done to Grand Ginger in the truck. And then we're also gonna talk about a message that we received from Outdoor Outreach from hashtag our hashtag. summer to remember. That's right, which is just, it, it was it was super special. Okay, so let's just dive right into it. And by the way, we are up in Prescott at Point of Rocks RV Resort, which they have so been nice. terrific, allowing us to install, we just got done with our solar installation. <laughs> We've made a giant mess. <laughs> it is ridiculous. This solar install went awesome. Now it might just look like I'm sitting here doing nothing, but as it turns out, I'm actually watching Jared <laughs> cut the back plate, would you say? Yeah. To the solar charger, so yeah. it's not like I'm not doing anything. Yeah, you're doing a great job, by the way. Yeah, you Look know, Trish calls this support. We're and gonna power the city of Prescott soon. <laughs> it's, it feels like it, so yeah. we're up here to meet up with Jared with his, our, with his channel, All About RVs, and Jared, when it comes to RV and electrical stuff, he is a genius. Wizard. <laughs> he is a general contractor, he is a videographer, and he is an RVer. Which means... That sounds like somebody I want to know, right? <laughs> which means that his channel, All About RVs, uh, talks about like RV newbie electrical stuff, surge protector, all the how-to stuff. So if you have any questions about making upgrades and repairs to your rig, definitely pop on over and subscribe to his channel because it's amazing content. So I'm going to link it there mm -hmm. and I'm also going to link it down below. But big thanks for Jared. I cannot wait to share the video because this is just, it's a professional install. And I'm going to give you a little hint. We just kicked off the air conditioning this morning on our batteries. <laughs> Whoa. So it's pretty Whoa. cool. So we're going to get to that, but we're going to talk more about that now. Let's just dive right into the top four destinations of season four in Num order of doing them. Number one, Balloon Fiesta. Spectacular. Spectacular. I, think, I think the word that we said when we were there was magical. Yes. Because it, it feels like, it feels magical because it kind of has, gosh, it doesn't even seem real. It doesn't seem real because of the magnitude, the amount of balloons that are in the air, the amount of people that are all around, and everyone there is there to have fun. And on top of it, if you are an RVer, mm -hmm. it is the coolest place to go because this like overnight city pops up. Yeah, there's 2,500 RVs, and the way that they shuttle everyone through with the buses works really well. Mm -hmm. But let, me, let us give you a couple tips when you go there. First of all, try to book way in advance because there are sites that have uh, water and electrical. Where are we? <laughs> Why are we dry camping then? So uh, those are 75 a night. Again, why well, are we dry camping? Reservations, book in advance. You gotta, oh, oh, you have there, to plan. You have there. to plan. Yeah. When I found that out and I realized we were dry camping <laughs> with no water. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of last minute, all right? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's one tip. The other tip is be prepared to wake up early because the show is in the morning and it starts around, you're gonna wake up about 4 a.m. You're gonna to wanna to be on the field around 5 a.m. right around the dawn to see the dawn patrol. Mm -hmm. And this is when they're lighting up the balloons. In the dark. In the dark. It is so special. So this is an event that really should be on your bucket list. It's so much fun. Albuquerque, where the balloon fiesta is, is really close to Santa Fe. So I'm gonna give an honorable mention, kind of tip, like our, tip, we tip wanna, the Alaska hat. Here, right, oh, okay. <laughs> For two. Okay, I'll, I'll say tip the hat, okay? You're, you're stretching your Alaska hat. If you are going to the Balloon Fiesta, the closest town is Santa Fe. So we want to do a little tip of the hat to Santa yes. Fe because 
it is worthy of a visit. And I think we'll find our way back to Santa Fe, maybe just the two of us, because it's mm -hmm. kind of a town where you just have good food and spa. Definitely, I think, a couple's vibe there. Yes, relaxed right. and yeah, very, very nice. All right, destination number two. Okay, so did we go here next or did we go here next? We I went to Arches. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. so the next stop here on our top four is Arches a gorgeous national park. And one of the things I loved is that you can jump in your car and mm -hmm. go for a drive. Let's say you're not able to get out of your car because you're in a wheelchair or you have tiny little kids and everyone's throwing a fit. You can go and do a drive through Arches and mm -hmm. have a spectacular time. No question. Mm -hmm. Okay, a couple hike recommendations for Arches. The first one is Delicate Arch. Yeah, it reminds me of um, Yosemite, but sandstone instead of granite. Yeah. It's so cool because it gets steep and you climb up this big rock, big sandstone slab and then you get into kind of like a little area where there's juniper trees and sand and then you go up on a slab again. Absolutely gorgeous. You want to go at sunset? Mm -hmm. Well, you can go anytime and have an amazing experience, but sunset really just sets the whole thing off. Everything oh, yeah. turns orange and it's a quiet magical moment where you can just be peaceful, see the sunset, and um, you'll find a moment to just reflect. Yes. That is the perfect place. And then the other hike recommendation is popping over to Mesa Arch, which I think that is in the Canyonlands. Mesa Arch is probably one of the more quintessential arch pictures that you're going to see. Well, delicate arch is definitely, but but you'll that's the that's That's a sunrise. The yeah. Mesa Arch is a sunrise photo shoot. Yes. Like heaven. Yeah. All right, so we're going to tip our hat for the second destination. We're going to tip our hat, our Alaskan hat over to <laughs> Monument Valley. This is another destination where you do not have to get out of your car or truck true. in order to participate at the highest level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 17 mile drive is a small fee mm -hmm. at the visitor center. Yeah. And then you can take your car or truck. It's a little rugged for a mm -hmm. car, but I, we saw plenty of them doing it. And you can be right on the valley floor with all of these tables and buttes <laughs> jetting up right <laughs> alongside of you. It is yep. gorgeous. Another fun thing to do at either sunrise or sunset. Yes. It's like an oil painting. For those that live on the East Coast and you haven't been out to the Southwest yet, or for oh. those that live overseas and you think about what the Southwest is, Monument Valley is the quintessential Southwest. Okay, so next on our list, number we, three. we dabbled, number three on the top four of season four, we dabbled in winter camping. We did. And that brought us to Breckenridge. The cutest town, mm -hmm. the cutest ski town. We haven't been there in the summer. I'd love to visit in the summer. Yes. And, but the winter was pretty pretty fun. So. And we stayed at Tiger Run. Tiger Run could be the best RV resort we've stayed at to date. Hands down ever. Yeah, it yes. really is nice. Mm -hmm. It's not inexpensive. No. But it is really nice and it's right next to the ski resorts. So if you enjoy winter skiing activities like we do, dog sledding, snow skiing, stuff like that, great place to stay. I'm sure it's even better in the summertime or mm -hmm. equally as good in the summertime. Yes. So many activities to do year round. Yeah. Colorado is so amazing. We have to go back. Oh yeah. We have to go back in the summer. We have to go back in the winter. I don't know how much winter camping we'll be doing. No, we're future. never going to do that again. <laughs> we we definitely are glad that we did it. We thought it was a lot of fun yes. and it was a good learning curve. But well, we met some people who do a really good job at it. So yeah. you'll get better with time, just like anything. Yeah. But um, there are a lot of moving parts that you have to manage. Number four on the list, last. Finale. And what is Lee's it? Ferry. Just last episode. It was so gorgeous. It was mm -hmm. the beginning of our journey in season one. We looked down at Horseshoe mm -hmm. Bend and the finale of season four, we were in a boat down at the bottom. Yes. All right, a couple cool. points to mention about Lee's Ferry. One is, you're gonna be blown away by the canyons and the fact that it feels like you're at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, even at the camp, even at the campground near the river. But 
you can, it's not 45 minutes and you can get into Page, you can see Lake Powell, mm -hmm. you could go into Antelope Canyon where you're gonna get those spectacular canyon shots. Mm -hmm. A couple tips on that, you're gonna wanna make reservations in advance because the time you wanna be taking pictures in those slot canyons is like between 11 and like two. And you're gonna find that those times are reserved first. Because the sun is pouring yeah, in. Yeah, you want and that's the sun to come right you're above. You're getting those reflections off the different yeah. walls and all the but, movement. But there's so much to do in that area that it had to make our top four list because you're not only gonna get Lee's Ferry, but you're gonna get so much more. Okay, so there are the top four destinations of season four. Now, let's talk about our top four tips for let's RV newbies. Those. Okay, so one saying that we like to live by because if we don't, we end up breaking something. <laughs> yes, and then have to and, file an insurance claim. Yes. And that is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And the thing that I always have to remind myself is that I'm not actually in a hurry. Mm -hmm. It's easy to think that we're in a hurry sometimes. And when I'm in a hurried mindset and I think I have to get there or I just feel like I need to hook up quick because we're coming up on 11 o'clock or 12, mm -hmm. that mental space is usually when I forget to do a walk around. Mm -hmm. It's usually when I forget to hook up something properly. Don't pull in the awning, don't pull in the slide. Something will happen in that hurried mindset. And I have to remember that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I think um, the saying goes, check yourself before you wreck yourself, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so really, you are putting the pressure on yourself, especially as a newbie, mm -hmm. okay? You might not know what the heck is going on. You're like, I gotta look like I know what's going on. Yeah. You don't need to look like anything. You no. just need to take your time, learn your process, do your process, and follow through because yeah. making a mistake can get expensive. You waste your time and your money. Yeah, so we get a lot of emails from people that say, Hey Mark and Trish, I just got my first rig. I'm so excited, da 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 What advice do you have? That's always my advice. Go, That's number one. Number one, go slow. Remember that you're not in a hurry and you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna need luck. Wish us luck. You're not gonna need luck. <laughs> just take your time. <laughs> Make your process, follow your process, yes. go slow. All right, so that's the first okay. tip. Our second tip, Trish. Second tip, we call it mind the dip. You know, mind the gap. Yes, mind the dip. <laughs> mind the dip, okay. You gotta tell them what the dip is. Cause Every, this is, cause this this is good stuff. Okay, what is the dip? It's when your expectations are over here and your reality is over here, and this is the space in between. So we want, we try and create a way to get over the dip as quickly as possible so you don't waste time and energy in here. I think a lot of times people have a certain vision as to how their trip is going to go. Maybe you've seen pictures on Instagram <laughs> or you saw this YouTube video and everything was so magical and then you oh. get there and. It, didn't quite live up to your expectations because maybe they were really high and then maybe the family starts getting on each other's nerves or the kids start arguing and you're thinking, this is not what I had planned. I think it's important to realize that it might just be a dip. The trip isn't falling apart. Nope. It's just gonna go through a little bit of dip. And So have like some tactics to move you through the dip faster or just to build a straight bridge. And sometimes that is um, having a funny joke mm -hmm. or just goofing around or, or leaving it alone. Sometimes when we put too much energy on like, this isn't working and you did this and you did yeah. that, then we're gonna hang out in this dip for a long time because then we've gotta repair the things we said. Like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for all the things Things I said when I was backing up the trailer, that yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, like that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and then, you know, our go-to move is to go get ice cream. Everything is going sideways, everyone's in a bad mood. You guys want some ice cream? Yes. I think it's important to acknowledge and have the whole family or the couple to know that, hey, we're in a little bit of a dip right now. Let's just start over tomorrow. Let's go, let's go out and reset and start over tomorrow so that you can get back on track and not have the dip just turn into a bad trip. Right. If you do have a limited amount of time, you don't want to spend most of it inside the dip. So if something <laughs> happens, you're wasting time and energy in here yes. and you want to get from here to here. So try and find shortcuts, things that will just kind of snap you out of something that doesn't go as planned. All right, Trish, what's number three on the list? Number three tip. For number RV three newbies. tip for RV newbies or anybody going on a trip is mind your budget, right? Yes. RVing is for everyone. You can have a, the most expensive rig and you can have a tent. On that note, I love the picture that Trish took. We were out in Carefree and she took this picture of this like massive class A and the next site over was a teardrop trailer. Here are two people in the same location looking at the same view, doing all the same activities and all mm -hmm. the same things 
RVing completely differently. It really right. is for everybody. It really on is. On all budgets. So, um, so take your budget, whatever it is, big or small, and make sure that you're putting the big rocks in first, mm -hmm. right? Spending the most money on the things that are gonna make the biggest impact. And there are a few things that can blow your budget right out of the water. One of them is food. Yes. I think that's the number one thing that can blow your budget. Going out to eat too mm -hmm. many times, instead pack a picnic, do things that can really streamline where you're gonna spend your money in the biggest ways to make the biggest memories. And the last tip is to create a tradition for your trips. Maybe at the end of a trip that you can get together with everyone and say, okay, what went well and what didn't go well? Mm -hmm. and maybe create a little list of things that you would improve next time. Stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so if you have like what worked, mm -hmm. like that's your big final dinner, like hey, what worked? Then you know what to shoot for next time. It's kind of like the groundhog uh, theory or the groundhog day mentality where you know, Billy, Bill Murray was it in that yeah. movie where he repeated the same day every time. Think about that when you're on your trip. So you think, okay, what could I do a little bit better? Because a lot of times having a wonderful RV trip is just because you're experienced enough to avoid the stuff that goes wrong. Learn from yourself. Yes. I think that's really oh, that's what great. it is. Yeah, learn from yourself. So, and then um, and that way you're kind of measuring your own trip. Like, hey, I'm, this is getting easier. This is getting more fun. That's right. So um, anyway. Okay, so there are top four tips for RV newbies. Now, we're gonna talk about Alaska Ooh. because we're getting a bunch of Alaska trips. But before we do that, we have to share with you a message that we received from Outdoor Outreach. We created the hashtag summer to remember t-shirt so that we could create community, mm -hmm. follow your adventures this summer, and then also give back. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we set a goal of 1,000 shirts mm -hmm. so that we could send a dollar for every shirt over to Outdoor Outreach. We crossed our fingers. <laughs> yes, we did. And we ended up sending them $2,690 because of you. I want to say thanks so much for supporting Keep Your Daydream by purchasing a t-shirt. Your gift makes a difference. Thank you, Keep Your Daydream! Woo! Be sure to use your hashtag summer to remember and hashtag Keep Your Daydream and we will find out what you're doing this summer. So this will cool. be me. Double tap. Like, like, <laughs> like. Okay, so Alaska. We've been getting a bunch of emails about Alaska because we've been talking about it for a while now and it's just about to start. So the first question that we've been getting is, are we going to caravan? No. No, we're not going to caravan. <laughs> we're terrible caravanners and we here's are. why. Here's why. <laughs> because we have to unplug. We can't just keep going. We caravan down to Mexico for safety reasons mm -hmm. and we didn't. And it was only five days. It was only five days and we didn't know what to expect and so the people were more experienced than us and it was fantastic yeah. but now we have we have a lot going on in this rig it's kind of a traveling circus so we're educating analogy. we're running a business and we're doing KYD which makes for a really tight timeline and sometimes we yeah. can explore and then there's a lot of time where we have to sit still and we have to work every weekend each video that we release takes about 25 to 30 hours just of editing time and then there's uploading and whatnot so that typically happens between Thursday and Saturday mm -hmm. so there's no way that we can keep up with a caravan we would just be the slowest group in the party because every once in a while we'd have to just unplug okay so let's talk about the timing We've been getting emails. When does season five start? When are you guys going to get on the road? So we're almost there. Just to set your expectations, we have about two, maybe three weeks of truck upgrades, RV upgrades, the solar, all that stuff. Some people love those videos. It is kind of part of the whole RV thing. You can't just travel indefinitely forever. Every once in a while, you need to stop, regroup, maintain, maintain, make some upgrades, get ready. And that's kind of where we are right now. Mm -hmm. So if you like those videos, you are going to love these upcoming videos because the installs are going really well and I've videoed all of it. it might be going well, but it is a lot of hard work. It is a ton of work. working very yes. hard. Now, and if you, and if you're not into those videos, then you just got to wait three weeks and we're off to Alaska and we'll be releasing a video every Sunday of our trip through Alaska. In fact, that's a good time to talk about our route because that's another question on the list. Yes. Well, we do know that we're going to start up in Fairbanks. Mm -hmm. So if you consider it a loop, it's not at the very top of Alaska, it's somewhere in the middle, but we're gonna do the loop. So we're starting at Fairbanks, we're doing Denali, down Denali to Mushroom. Anchorage, mm -hmm. yeah. and then the Kenai Peninsula, and we haven't figured out our exit route yet. Well, from the Kenai, then we'll go down into Homer, Seward. But and we, then there's some things in there that are a little dicey. Palmer, Valdez, yeah, maybe yeah, down, yeah. we don't really know, yeah, so it's yeah, gonna yeah. kinda go like that. Now, it's gonna take us about a month, it'll take us about a month to get from Arizona up to Fairbanks. Oh my goodness. And then the channel will run a little bit behind that. So that's what you can expect on that. But even the route up there will be pretty cool. And the kickoff episode so for season five, views. we have a bit wait. of a surprise for the kickoff of season five. 
Oh, yay. All right, now, last question we get. Meetup? Oh yeah, meetup. Oh, you guys yes. need to do a meetup. But yes, we are going to try to do a meetup in Anchorage. Meetups are kind of like this perfect storm thing because we need to know when we're actually going to do it so we can get the word out. Right. And then we need to be there. And we need a location. Yes, and we need a location. So there's all these things that have to happen perfectly while we're traveling. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, meetups are not as easy as they seem, but we are trying to make that happen. In Anchorage. In so we'll Anchorage. keep you posted on that. What I loved about season four is that not everybody's a full-time mm -hmm. RVer, and that's not what this is about. No. This is about where your RV can take you. And so I loved the Southwest for that very reason, because we were gone for a weekend, we were gone for a week. Mm -hmm. We were doing what people usually do in their RV. So so, you know, just carving out that time and making those special memories with your family because that's what this is about. And you've heard me say this before, RVing is not the hobby. Why you bought the RV is the hobby to connect with family, to explore, to go... Adventure. Adventure. Yes. Yeah. And so it's important not to lose sight of that because you can geek out on the RV and you can get to the point where it is almost overwhelming because it needs so much. And right. Can... What can you do right now? Because the idea is to be out with the people you love. Yes. That's it. That's, That's as it. simple as it is. So yeah. season four really brought that home for me personally because we got to achieve things that we needed to achieve. We yeah. Needed to we, do at home. we had a lot of obligations that we needed to do in Arizona. And so what happened is we ended up using Arizona as a base and we went up on these trips and we just kept coming back like this. And at the same time, we're pretty excited to get out on the road again and yes. go way far from home too. Oh my God. Very cool. We're so glad you're here. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. A chance to kind of catch up a little bit before mm -hmm. we really start cranking. And stay tuned for so many upgrade videos and how-to stuff like that. Oh my gosh. All kinds of information coming your way yes. in the next couple weeks. All right. We'll catch you next Sunday. Like always, we're so glad you're here. Bye.